Hey, it's Matt from Trisman Digital Marketing. In today's video, I want to walk you through how to generate more phone call leads for your Google Ads account uh, in 2022. Now, there are quite a few things I'm going to cover here. I'm going to go back and forth in between the actual Google, our Google Ads account, our demo account, and the actual little list I've created and show you how to do all this stuff in detail. But I just kind of wanted to run over a few things first on how we generate leads for our customers. The first thing is we use call only ads and search campaigns almost exclusively. So call only ads are found in search campaigns, but I kind of differentiate the two. I consider a call only ad campaign as a separate thing and a search campaign as a separate thing, even though they are intertwined. But these are generally the two best ways of getting leads in 2022. One is the actual call only ad campaign, which is literally putting up ads where people can click on them and they'll directly call you. And the other one is a search campaign with dedicated landing pages with one of two calls to action, either a phone call with a uh, email inquiry option or just a phone call option. And uh, both of these uh, options, whether it be the actual call only campaign or the search campaign with dedicated landing pages, both are absolutely fantastic. We prefer the search campaign as it kind of gets rid of a, a lot of the spam calls, but the call only ad campaign is also a great option. And it, it is very, very simple to set up. We have tutorials on both on our channel if you're interested in checking those out on how to set them up. But using one of these two is probably your best bet in 2022. We really haven't seen anything that outperforms them. Yeah, there are certain campaigns with like multi-layer steps in their uh, sales funnel and stuff like that that will outperform this but when it comes to simplicity and getting really good results i i don't know of any uh, campaigns that really top this now the first thing is adjusting devices now when you're going after phone call leads generally you want to be targeting mobile devices and you want to place a bid modifier on mobile devices we like to start off with a 10 percent bid adjustment uh, right on mobile devices especially for exclu exclusively going after uh, phone call leads only so if we get a business owner who says like, listen, I only want phone call leads. I don't care about email inquiries. I just want phone calls. What we would do is we'd come down to the devices section of our campaign. This is a demo account, by the way. And we would come over to our mobile phones and we would hit increase. And we would probably do to start it off at 10%. This is if it was a brand new campaign, we would start it off at 10%. And most of the time we would either completely get rid of computer and tablet devices. We'd hit decrease by 100% or maybe decrease by 20%, depending on how the actual conversion or cost per conversions were coming in just because we have seen time and time again mobile phones when it comes to phone call leads outperform computers and tablets time and time again so it it's really uh stereotyping and generalizing here but it generally pr uh, proves correct so that's generally why we go with this method um that being said, always test everything. Sometimes we do see excellent results with uh, computer devices and tablet devices, and we'll leave them, or we, we might even increase their um, bid adjustment just because of how well they're performing. And if the actual quality of leads are good, leave it, right? Uh, there's really no reason to get rid of them if uh, they're performing well. But generally, we do adjust them right off the bat, uh, just because from prior experience, we know that they don't perform as well uh, when it comes to phone call leads, generally. The next thing is adjust demographics. So I see a lot of people actually not adjusting demographics whatsoever. And uh, it kind of blows my mind, which is, you know, even though Google isn't perfect when it comes to demographics and figuring out like exactly what everyone's age is, it's pretty good at putting it in the ballpark. So if you're selling products that, you know, an 18 to 24 year old generally can't afford, you shouldn't be targeting 18 to 24 year old. What we would do is we hit audiences right here and then we'd come over to demographics. Now, when you actually have data in the account, this is just a demo account right now, so we don't have any data in it, but you can see 18 to 24, zero clicks, 25 to 34, 35 to 44, 45 to 54, and 55 to 64. Once you have enough of this data, you can generally see a pretty good trend of, okay, these people are you know calling or these people are buying and i want to really only target them and the way you go about doing that is you hit edit demographics you hit one ad group you hit one ad group that you want to go after so say it's maybe fiberglass pools and then all we have to do is we come in here say this was checked we can just uncheck it maybe we don't want to go after you know 25 to 34 year olds we only want to go after 35 to 64 year olds get rid of uh, 65 plus and then we just hit save demographics and now your ads won't show for that age range and it really helps with getting more leads and spending more ad spend on where you're actually seeing a return as opposed to people who really aren't going to buy from you the next thing is time of day i am shocked by how many people will run ads 24 hours a day even though no one's going to pick up the phone no one's going to see an email and it 
it really affects your closing rate because the quicker you can respond to someone, the more likely they are to buy from you because the more likely you're going to be the first person to solve the problem and uh, they'll just go with you. So it's very, very useful to actually know when your hours are and to get it right. Because if you're just, you know, bidding every hour of every day, seven days a week, chances are you're going to get random calls at like midnight. No one's going to answer them and then they'll go find someone else and you just wasted a whole bunch of money. So what we like to do is put the hours ex exactly set with the business hours or whenever someone can actually answer the phone. So we even sometimes have business hours that the owner's like, yeah, we're technically in business, but no one's really going to answer the phone at like, you know, six o'clock at night or whatever. So, so like, listen, let's run it from, you know, maybe 8 a.m. till 4 p.m. Uh, as long as someone can answer the phone, that's good. Don't waste your money running it at, you know, midnight or two o'clock in the morning because no one's going to answer the phone and you're just going to waste money there. And to go along with the actual ad schedule is the actual days of the week are also very important and often overlooked. Businesses, I, I, I know businesses that want to run seven days a week, 24 seven, and I almost always recommend against that, especially if they cannot pick up the phone. If you're, if you don't work Saturday and Sunday, don't run ads Saturday and Sunday because you're not going to answer the phone. You're not going to respond quickly enough and they're going to go find someone else. Uh, at least the majority of the time they will. The other thing about the weekends that I, I'm very hesitant to run ads on is that people on weekends tend to have a lot more time on their hands to look around for options and find the lowest quote as opposed to people on weekdays. If you have a problem on a Tuesday, you have a lot less time to look around and adjust and compare quotes than compared to on a Saturday and Sunday where you're generally off of work and you can look around. And a lot of the time we see really poor results on Saturday and Sunday. So we just cut that generally from our campaign. If we have a massive budget, of course, we'll run Saturday and Sunday because we just need the volume. But if we have like a moderate sized budget and we're not in any real rush to spend it, I would say run Monday to Friday. You'll see the best results generally on those days. And that's what I recommend right off the bat for most people. Uh, stay away from weekends generally. And uh, if you were going to add these in, all you have to do is click on the little pencil icon here, hit schedule, and then you can enter in your hours. I generally just hit Monday to Friday and then we hit save and then they pop up down here and you can see how every single day of the week is performing. And another thing you can do is you can come in here and actually adjust bids. So if you have a really crappy Wednesday and uh, your cost per conversion is really high on Wednesday, you can come in and adjust this. You could say, maybe I want to decrease it by five or 10% and just see my cost per conversion on those days go down. And you can do that. It's a very, very good way at you know reducing wasted ad spend and getting more return for your money and getting more phone call leads for yourself. Uh, the next thing is actual gender slash income level segmentation. I put these two uh, together because they're not always stuff we adjust. Generally, gender is pretty equal for most of our customers when it comes to actual results. So we don't see much use in adjusting it, but some companies, they do see a big difference. So if you were going to adjust this, I would say get a decent amount of data first. Look at what that says. Uh, if you have, you know, 20 or 30 conversions and you see all of the conversions are male or female, I would say, okay, now we can start going in here and adjusting it because there's just such a, a difference between one gender or the other. And then you could just, let's say, you know, females are the ones buying our products. So we could just get rid of male. We could also get rid of unknown. Depends on how that's converting. Generally, that has its own stat and you can compare the three. Um, maybe, so, but, but for this example, we'll just get rid of male. Um, another thing is the actual income level. Uh, depending on what you're selling, it's very important to keep this in mind. If you're selling super high price items, generally you want to target people who are, you know, higher up in the income level. Uh, it really depends on your service. If your service can, you know, and capture everyone, maybe you can go with all, with all of them. Uh, look at what the data says. Maybe even, you know, maybe 21 to 30% is converting best and you should just target them and you'll get a better return. Really depends on what the data says. But these two things, I don't always go super into depth with them just because generally I don't see that much difference. But sometimes there are ma major differences and they should be segmented properly and adjusted. So you can optimize your account and get more phone call leads for yourself. So all you have to do is hit save and now we've adjusted age, gender, household income, and you're set for that. Um, the next thing is exact match keywords. So exact match keywords, like it says here, is are your friend. Right now, exact match keywords are the cream of the crop when it comes to actual keywords. You find exact match keywords when you click on keywords here. Um, you click on the actual plus button and you can go into your actual ad group. Let's go down to, uh, 
what did I click on? Fiberglass pools. Yeah, fiberglass pools. The way you add an exact match keyword is you put a bracket around it. So let's put fiberglass pools. Hamilton. Hamilton's a city right near us. So in case you didn't know who, what that was, uh, and essentially what this does is only target the keyword fiberglass pool Hamilton. And this used to be exact match. So this was the only word. If you added an S to this, like someone typed in fiberglass pools, Hamilton's and added an S to it, your ad would not pop up. But now exact match has really gotten a lot less or a lot more lenient, I should say. And really, it'll pop up for quite a bit. So we use exact match. It's a really good replacement now that phrase match has gotten uh, combined with essentially broad match modified. And it's really, really wide and it'll target a lot. We much prefer just going after exact match. We might add one or two phrase match to our campaign. But most of the time, we're just sticking with exact match just because of how uh, lenient it now is. But yeah, so we, we really like going after exact match. That's how you add it to a campaign. I recommend most campaigns, especially in the service-based businesses, to be going after exact match. And this is generally the best way we get leads. They're very easy to manage. You can figure out what uh, keywords are performing well very quickly. Once you have right around 10 clicks, you can generally figure out whether or not a keyword's a winner. And you can you know, either continue with it or pause it or do whatever you want with it. Maybe build it out into its own ad group. But that is what I would say about exact match. And they will save you a ton of money when compared to phrase match and broad match, which are just going to burn a ton of money. So please use exact match when generating uh, leads, especially for phone calls. If you are using call only ads, I would recommend using precisely only exact match. Um, if you start using phrase and broad match, you're just going to target everything. And when it comes to call only ads, keywords will make or break your campaign. So I, I really suggest using only exact match for those uh, call only campaigns. With search campaigns and you're sending traffic to a dedicated landing page, you have a little bit more leniency uh, just because you know someone has to actually click on your ad, then go to your landing page, read the landing page, and then make a decision as opposed to just clicking on your phone call lead and calling you. So uh, yeah, you have a little bit more leniency with the search campaign. But that being said, the last thing on our list to generate more phone call leads is to use negative keywords. Even if you're using exact match keywords, you'd be surprised how uh, random terms can still kind of pop up in your account. So what you have to do is at least on a weekly basis, depending on how much data is coming into the account, if there's a lot of data, you might even want to do it more than once a week. But you come down to your search terms report, and this is going to be filled with all of the search terms people actually typed into Google. You're going to go through here, and you're going to figure out which terms you didn't like, which terms you did like. If you like them, you could add them to maybe your keywords under exact match, maybe even phrase match, depending on what you're doing. And the ter terms you didn't like, you're going to add to your negatives so they never pop up in your account again and you save a whole bunch of money and you generate yourself more phone call leads. And all you have to do is you hit your negative keywords, you type in whatever search term popped up. So maybe it's um, uh, above ground pools. We don't want to target that. Above ground pools, we can just do that. We can leave it as broad match. Broad match, not, broad match doesn't encompass that much when it comes to actual negatives. If this was the positive version, it would cover a lot. But for this, we're just going to leave it as it is. We're going to hit save, and you're good. And now we've added our negative keyword to our negative keyword list, and our ads will no longer pop up for above ground pools. And you can add this to the campaign or ad group level. I generally go with the campaign level. Uh, there are circum certain circumstances where you could add them to the ad group level, and it would be it would make more sense. You could also add it as exact or phrase match. It's really up to you and your account and how it's set up. But that overall is how to generate more phone call leads inside Google Ads. If you follow these steps, your account will more than likely be successful and you'll be able to see more phone calls on a regular basis for your account and see more success. Uh, if you have any comments, questions, or concerns, leave them down in the comment section down below. I'd be happy to answer them. Other than that, you guys have a wonderful day and take care.